So, as you're probably familiar with, traditionally, programming computers have been done in text files. Um, looking at one here from a Unity game I made uh, a few months back. Uh, and it works, you know, it's, some of it look, might look a little bit like English, but then we have all these other symbols in there. And that's what traditional computer programming was based on, uh, this text-based thing. And then this would be translated into something the machine knows at runtime. But there are some drawbacks. Humans are very prone to making a typo, especially when we're throwing in a bunch of symbols in different places and things that aren't exactly words. The typos are very prone, and unless the programmer put effort into cleaning up the code, it might be really hard to follow, even for the person that wrote it. So one alternative that has been growing in popularity is visual scripting tools, um, no-code or low-code solutions, where instead of typing with text, we can drag symbols around, and the computer will write all the code in the background when it's ready to. And we have this nice visual representation to see what's going on. The one we're looking at here is called Bolt, and it works for with Unity, so for developing games as well. And we just drag these symbols around with our mouse, make the connections, and then the computer writes all the code of, code in the background, uh, just like it did if we typed the text. And that visual representation gives us something that's a whole lot easier to work with, many people find. And definitely much less prone for typos. So let's take a look uh, at using Bolt rather than C Sharp scripts to create a simple Unity game. So here's my plan for these tutorials here. We, I just downloaded some assets from the Unity Asset Store. Some characters and backgrounds and things. Have this character walking around. Have some other characters here. And when our player character approaches one of the NPCs, a question pops up. These questions were copied from a quiz in a class I taught recently. So that is sent to a per sent by a program to the screen, a printer, or a file, well, that's output. So we enter output, and when it's a correct answer, the question just kind of goes away. And an incorrect answer, maybe uh, stuff, the question remains. So a very simple one, basically it's just the character walking around, and there's still a few bugs for sure, and talk, interacting with these different characters here in this room. So let's get started into looking at how we put this together to get an introduction to the visual scripting. And we can see down here where it's running, along with the that visual representation, we can see the flow of information going through there, what variables, what values are being passed back and forth at each time. It makes can make debugging a whole lot easier than looking for a small typo in a huge text file. So let's get started with this. So obviously the first thing we need to do is get our Unity environment set up ready to work with Bolt. So I'm gonna create a new project, give it some sort of name. Um, I'll just call it sample. It's going in this folder and I'm gonna do a 2D one today. So a 2D project. Stick it in some folder on my drive. Go ahead and create that project, which is going to be some waiting. So I'm going to pause the video while that gets everything. So here's the new project created in the Unity environment. Uh, so we're looking at a lot here. There's different, lots of different panels that have different information. We can move these around, just grab it, kind of pull it out, have it stand on its own, or move it around, dock it in different places corresponding to different panels, depending on what we want to see at a given time. So the default layout, let me go back to that. The default layout has the hierarchy. This is the objects in our game scene. Here we're looking at the scene itself, along with the, uh, let me switch over and look at how, the, how it will look when we hit the run button. And the scene is for putting them together. The inspector gives us information about the scene. Uh, 
down here we have the project project this is basically a file explorer where we can access all the files used in our project so we need to install bolt and some assets in order to get started here so if we go to the window and asset store that will pull this up and access the internet access the unity asset store which you could also go through your regular browser window i i like to just go from directly from unity to install stuff and one other thing notice there's this little button here looks kind of like a hamburger button with an arrow beside it and all of these windows have it that's where the maximize ones maximize is hidden you might want to see the whole screen for the asset store And once it pulls up, then we can just come to this search bar and search for Bolt. Which seems to be running really, really slow today. I think it's because I have a number of things running at this moment. I'm going to pause and wait for this to pull up. Okay, now that that's found, found Bolt, we can scroll through here. Uh, the first thing it found was some really nice looking lightning bolts. $20, a little more than I have to spend today. If we scroll down right near the top, we should find Bolt Visual Scripting. If we select that. The Bolt Visual Scripting tool is very nice. It allows us to just move our mouse around and put all the code together instead of typing everything, which is very prone to typos. Computers never make typos. And this is a free asset. It's uh, actually included in Unity now. So anything that we could do in C Sharp, we can also do in Bolt. So we can do all the scripting for our game with the visual scripting tool rather than the text based thing. And the first time you might have to hit download, but after you've downloaded it once, you can just hit import and that will bring it right into the project. And this might take a minute, so I'm going to video up. That didn't take as long as I was expecting. This little window will pop up saying what we just brought in from the asset store. We'll just go ahead and import everything for now. And I'm going to pause the video while this comes through. Okay, so after a little bit of waiting, I can move this out of the way, make that small again. And now you'll notice down in the assets, section of the project panel which is like a file explorer you'll see there's this new folder called install bolt so if we go in here there should be two installers just select either one of those and go ahead and run that and there's quite a bit to do so i'm gonna pause the video while this runs and i'll unpause it here in a second oh so here is all the things that it wants to install and for now, just go ahead and import all of them. And there was quite a bit of waiting on that step. Uh, I sat here for a minute, then went and refilled my coffee, came back, sat here for a couple more minutes. So as this, as it kind of sets up, there's a bit of waiting and watching the little meters on the screen. There's a couple points where it looks like it might free, might be frozen up, but it will start moving eventually. It's just, it does a whole, whole lot. But eventually the little setup wizard will pop up and for this we can mostly accept the defaults to start with the one choice we have to make is how do we name how are we going to put the labels on our little units that we drag around the little objects we drag around to create the visual script uh, human naming is a lot closer to english or programmer naming is what it would look like in c sharp so if you're using bolt as an introduction to Unity to lead into C Sharp scripting, you might want to use programmer naming. Or if you're already familiar with writing scripts in C Sharp, programmer naming might be good. For us today, I'm just going to go with human naming. And everything else, I'm just going to accept the defaults. Next. And generate all of this and more waiting.
All right, so eventually all that will load in and it's ready to go. And another big advantage of that is with Bold, we'll work right in Unity. We don't need a secondary piece of software like Visual Studio to write the scripts. We're in working in the Unity IDE the entire time. So along with that, we probably want some uh, some assets so that we can to use in our game. Some characters and backgrounds and things. We could draw them all, but there's a lot already on the store for us to look for. So if I go back to the home page, I'll just search for 2D assets. Well, it seems to be running, so I'm going to pause while. Okay, so for some reason, the, the browser window, the asset store window, froze up on me. I had to restart it. But all I did is select the filter for 2D games, open up the asset store, select the filter for 2D right on the home page. And if we scroll down, there's quite a few here. I'm just going to choose a free one. Here's the, here's the one for free. And this name right here, Brackies, this guy has some excellent tutorials on YouTube and makes some really nice assets. So if you see his name on tutorials, that's definitely one to watch. I'm just going to download a pack from him here. Uh, has a whole lot of stuff in this. I've seen this one before. But that link leads over to this page, kind of talks about it, shows some images. You can dig through the assets, find some that you like, and the button will say download, and that just stores it to your account. After you've downloaded it once, the button will say import, so then you just hit import, and it will bring it right into the project. And this happens a whole lot quicker than the uh, than Bolt. Well, I won't have to pause the video here, but there we go. You can import that into the packet, into the project. And then once all the assets finish downloading, we can go ahead and close the asset store. So on that little button that all these panels have, turn off maximize, and then there should be an option to close it. So now we have the assets, all the stuff for Bolt is fully installed. And this folder of assets from Bracky is downloaded. Lots of things in here. We'll look at that in a moment. But we have all the stuff we need to work it with. So the next step is probably setting up our environment here in a form that we can see all the pieces we need. So I'll do that in the next video.